play the opening and you think everything is going well for you. You see a possible peace exchange, you just do it. Problem is, you don't understand position or strategy in the middle game. But you're lucky, because your opponent doesn't get it as well. But what's the consequence of this? You end up playing way more pawn end games than professional players do. I spent hours in the forums trying to understand how you think about chess end games. And I found two problems. You believe chess end games are easy, because you have less pieces on the board. Just think about something. If you have less pieces, you have more free squares, which means the pieces left can go to all sorts of different squares that are not taken by pieces. More variations, more calculations calculation way harder. Problem number two, you believe chess end games are boring, so you don't work patterns and you don't know what to play and you end up losing the game. But today I have a solution for you. I found three concepts that I want you to use next time you're in a pawn end game. In this position, if you're playing with the white pieces, there is a big chance that you already resigned, gave up, went to the bar or somewhere, totally fuming and trying to forget that you lost in this position with white. Because you're thinking that this pawn that is going this way, can easily be stopped. How does your king actually comes back on time to stop this pawn? Because if you start like this, all your opponent has to do is simply go and queen. But what if I tell you that in this position, you are not losing with white? This is a race. In this example, we're going to use the concept of double threat. And I will threaten you as well, if you don't subscribe. So the first move you're going to do is playing this move. Your opponent is going to start pushing his pawn and now you're going to come here. And let me tell you, in king and pawn endgames, the fastest route for the king is actually in diagonal. Why this move is actually strong, it creates a double threat because you are threatening to go this way and protect the pawn and help him to actually promote. And at the same time, the second threat is that you're threatening to come back and actually control this pawn. Let me show you how it goes. Now your friend is going to push. And here, there is absolutely no reason for you to actually try to go and stop him because you simply can't. He's two squares from promoting his pawn. But the only reason why we went here and here is to actually have the opportunity to go this way, like this. Because now, if he pushes, now you can push your pawn. When the king comes, you're on time to come and protect. Yes, he queens on the next move, but you queen as well. And this is a draw because both queens are just going to give, you know, checks nonstop. So what happened here? Let me show you a different variation here. He didn't have to necessarily when you played this move and he pushed. You came to f6 with the double threat in mind. Remember this, with the king, you have to create a double threat. You're either trying to come back or going this way to help this pawn. Now, what happens if instead of pushing his pawn, he just comes with his king? Because we cannot protect this pawn anymore. This pawn is lost. But that was a double threat. And you continue with the double threat in mind. What you do is that you put your king here. You continue in a diagonal. It's pretty crazy, but if you don't know this pattern, there is no way that you can replicate it in your game. Why is this again a double threat? Because you are trying to actually come back to this square where you will be able to stop this pawn. But at the same time, you're threatening this move and you protect this one. So let's say he pushes. Now what you do, you cannot come back for, for this pawn anymore. It's too late coming here doesn't help because he's just gonna queen so what you do and that's that's why it was a double threat you go the other way and now your opponent is defended yes he pushes you push yours and you end up in the exact situation where you both have a queen but what if he doesn't push this pawn what if instead he just takes your pawn now there is the second concept, the rule of the square. What you can do when you see a pawn here, you have to draw a line to the last possible square and then you draw a square. And if the king enters in the square, he can stop the pawn. So here we see this possible square. What is the next move for white? You enter in the square. When he pushes, you know that you can stop the pawn. There is nothing he can do about it. This is another position where white is going this way, but black is going this way. And you think that your king is really too far away to actually stop this pawn. But the problem is, his king is pretty close to your pawn here to stop. You pushing the pawn doesn't work because you just have to do this. And you're totally winning because he pushes, the king comes, and this pawn is lost. But then this one can never be stopped. 
What if I tell you that here, white is not losing this position? I can easily say if you're below 1800, you already resigned in this position with white, thinking this is red carpet, this one can be controlled, so what can I do? Again, we're gonna use the three principles that we know the king double threat concept in pawn end games. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna go in totally opposite direction from this pawn, it's counterintuitive here. But what you do by pushing your king there to c8 is that you're threatening to come here and then this pawn is unstoppable. So for instance, your opponents after playing this move, they're gonna find a way to actually just destroy their position and blunder by playing this move. They went from a draw to a totally losing position after you do this. And they are not on time anymore to stop this pawn. There is nothing you can do. They just come back and they control this pawn. So you see that by playing this move, they have to be super careful because we're trying to go here and if we do, then this pawn is unstoppable. The best move for black here is to come with their king as well. Again, you do something that is totally counterintuitive, but you have the double threat in mind. Next time, just think about the double threat. Here again, you go again in the opposite direction and you play this move. Why? Because if your opponent is 600, he's gonna play this without thinking, you're gonna push the pawn, He's gonna come with the king and only now he understands why we played this move. Because we can push and our pawn is protected. They can push if they want, but you're gonna queen first and there is nothing they can do. They're gonna end up losing this game. But okay, they don't have to play this way. But when you play king b8, the best move for black, if they're a good player, they must understand that they have to actually eliminate the pawn by playing this move. There is again some rope to actually just blunder. Let me show you what the blunder and what you do in your game is that you're thinking, okay, now he's gonna take the pawn. So surely I have to start going and trying to stop this one. It's a race, but you're not on time. Let me give you this rule. Unless your pawn disappeared, your king move must be a double threat. Whenever this pawn is not here anymore, you can go for the race. So here, if you go king c7, there is no way you can stop it. Because look what's happening. The king comes here, we do the rule of the square. Again, just draw a square here. Is this king in the square? Of course he's not. So this pawn cannot be stopped. Let's go back for a second, because I said that white is not losing this game. Now, just create this pattern in your mind. The pawn is still here, this is a race. As long as this pawn is here, I have to go with double threats with the king. And you find that the best move in this position is this. Why? It allows you to move your king closer, but at the same time creating a threat of pushing the pawn that will be protected. If for instance, he pushes, he loses again, because now you had the double threat. When he pushes, you get the queen first, and there is nothing he can do. He's gonna lose the pawn next and the game. So here, the only move for black, if they're a good player, is to actually take the pawn. But now there is a big difference because look at this, draw a square now, you are in it. So you move, even when they push, you do another square here. Whenever you enter the square on the next move, you can stop the pawn. Look at this and you're on time. And this is the reason why this position was actually a draw. But if you didn't know the double threat concept, no way you can find it. This is another position where if you're playing with the white pieces, you're already at the pub and trying to forget about this game because you're already resigned. And it's a mistake if you do this because this position with white is again a draw. But you have to know how to defend it. Here, you play king e3. You're attacking this pawn. So black is going to simply defend it. Now you come back, he goes forward and you try to take the opposition here. What is the opposition that I see so many people struggling with this? You simply put your king in front of the other king and there is one square that separates both king. Think about it like a tennis player. He's in the center of the court if he wants to get the ball, right? If he wants to decide to go right or left. You know, if he stays on the right, well, his opponent is just gonna smash him on the left. If he goes on the left and stays there, all you have to do is use the right. Think about it this way, for the king, make sure that you block these three squares. So you are ready to react when he makes a move. Now he's gonna push, you go here, he takes a position, and now you go to a square where when he comes here, you are the one taking a position again. But he's gonna push, and you're thinking, after this move, now he goes for your pawns here. 
he gives you this one, but he's gonna take everything. And now you're thinking about resigning again. But there is a trick here. The trick is a stalemate. You take the pawn, he take yours, but now you block him by taking one more time the opposition. He's defending your pawn, he's controlling this square and this one, and this king, and this king is, tot is totally blocked. All he can do is this, take opposition again. He comes back, you come back. There's nothing he can do, and you come back. The other move that he can play in this position is pushing the pawn, right? But here, all you have to do is just move your king here, and this is a stalemate. This king cannot move. And you draw the position this way. One more position where you can save your pawn end game. At first glance, whenever you look at this position and you see a protected past pawn like this, the only thing that you want to do right now is give up. But not all past pawns are actually winning. And I'm sure for some of you it's the first time you hear about this. But here, black is not losing. This is a total draw. All white can do is just bring their king. You go back with your king. And now they cannot do anything. If they push this pawn, you, you simply take it. So the only move is to come with the king in this situation. And all you have to do is just take opposition. And look, the king cannot come here because the pawn controls it. Basically, when it's a pawn that is on the aisles like this, this king can only attack this pawn by going like this, for instance. But we are blocking him with the king. And now you're thinking maybe the other move is to push. All you have to do is come back with the king. And if he wants to keep protecting this pawn, he has to play this. But it's again another stalemate. This one is a bit more complex, but it's beautiful. And I'm sure you can understand it. In this situation, you may think, if black is a good player here, he's gonna offer a draw. Because he's gonna tell you, listen, I have three pawns, you have three pawns, on the same side of the board. This is a draw, come on. Let's just forget this game and play another blitz. But it's not. Let me first show you what you do in your games. You try to exchange everything, so you may think about this push, but now you see, okay, he's gonna take. So the first move that you play is bring the king. Now he brings his king. You push and you're thinking, okay, he's gonna take, you're gonna take with the king and it's gonna be an easy draw. But guess what? After you play this move, now he plays this. And you're totally lost in this position. Because whatever you do, even taking the pawns, he has the opposition with the king. He comes and there is nothing you can do to actually stop this king infiltrating actually the position. And as you can see after this move, where he takes opposition, you cannot stay and protect this pawn. And you're totally lost because he's gonna grab everything everything he's gonna take both pawns here and you're lost but what if i tell you that you were totally winning with white in this position the winning move is to break the pawn structure like this and understand that first of all what happens if he takes the pawn now you are using the fact that this king is too far away to come and protect the pawn so all you have to do is just take the pawn and then next you're gonna take this one and then you're gonna go for this one next. And you win very easily with two pass pawns. So he cannot take actually this pawn. Instead, the second move that he can play is push. And here, taking doesn't achieve anything because all he's gonna do is take back and he's gonna have two pass pawns. What you do instead, you push this one. You create what we call another deviation. Because if he takes like this, red carpet, this one becomes totally unstoppable. And this one, all I have to do is bring the king and he's not on time to actually stop it. So you win this way. You created a deviation by sacrificing a pawn just to open the door to actually have this one go. But now you're telling me, okay, he didn't have to take like this. Maybe the other idea is to take with this pawn, but it's the same thing because you're going to take the H pawn. And look what happens. Let's do a square. Very easily stoppable, this one. How about this one? Let's do a square. Is this king in the square? Of course not. So this pawn is unstoppable. So you just go like this. All, that's all you have to do when he tries to come back. It's too late. So you see how you can create a deviation in pawn and games. There was another move. What if he brings the king straight away? This still doesn't work because you take. He brings the king. Now you take this pawn. He takes back. Now you go with the king. He comes and you come here and you see that his king has to go away 
he cannot stay and protect this pawn. And you'll have two pass pawns and you're going to win very easily this endgame.